So my job is basically to give thank yous to all the people that helped make this happen. And then I want to make a, a, a few announcements of upcoming things. And then, then uh, I'll read the order of readers and we'll just start. Uh, so first of all, uh, POG exists in part through uh, gifts and support from AZ Cares through the Arizona Commission on the Arts, from Poets and Writers, from the UA Poetry Center, from Chax Press, from the UA English Department, the Arizona Quarterly, uh, also individual patrons, uh, myself, Mary Ellen Bartholomew, Charles Bernstein, Cynthia Hogue, Jason Lagapa, Joan Larkin, Judith um, Lefay, uh, Cameron Louie, Lisa Presi Lisa Perioli Martin, uh, John Melillo, Cynthia Miller, Tenny Nathanson, Nancy Quigg, Stephen Romaniello, Stephen Salmoni, Will Stanier, Richard Tavener, David Weiss, and another group of sponsors, Karen Brennan, uh, Cutthroat, a Journal of the Arts, Pam Ushuk, uh, Reed Dixon, Lynn Finger, Anna Lambert, Little Red Leaves, Don Pendergast, Heidi McDonald, Barbara Miller, Jameson Nonix, uh, Oracle Retreat for Writers, Jenna Osman, Propolis Press, and Anthony Sovak, Maria Starr, and Susan Thackeray. And you can join that list anytime you want at pogartstucson.org, and you can find um, more about us there. Uh, we have upcoming readings in uh, an upcoming reading in October uh, by Beverly Dolan. Cynthia Hogue and Cole Swenson. And uh, please go to, you know, pogartstucson.org and find the details about that. We basically have a reading every month in, in the few months to come through the fall. And then we pick up again in January. Like a lot of places, we thought we might be live and in person this fall, but we kind of decided that that particular line or curve was not one we wanted to be the leaders on. We'd rather be behind that curve a little bit and make sure everybody stays as safe as they possibly can. So we're looking at going live uh, sometime this spring, but it'll just be something we consider as things move ahead. Uh, you know, for me, I can't believe I see these pictures on television screen of 80,000 people unmasked at football games, but <laughs> even though that's outdoors at least. Um, also, I wanted to announce uh, on Tuesday of this week, there's a, what looks to be a fascinating event on translation, uh, kind of a, a festival of translation and languages at the U of A Poetry Center. That is this Tuesday evening coming up and you can uh, go to their uh, website, UA Poetry Center, and find that, I'm sure. And then also, I'll just announce one more reading. Uh, coming up on September 26th, uh, Chax Press is hosting um, a multi, or, or at least a bilingual reading, um, that the primary readers are Sarah Riggs and Habib Tengor, and Sarah's work will be translated and read in French as well in her, as in her own English. And Habib's, which is who writes in, Habib writes in French, that will be translated into English. So it'll be a kind of a back and forth uh, reading with the, uh, and the translators I know include uh, Pierre Joris and Marie Borel and, and others. So please, uh, if you can look at chax.org and events for that, event. We'd love to see you there. Okay. And now I move things around. I want to share one thing that's on my screen. My computer is very slow when I'm in Zoom and I'm not entirely sure why, but it is. Just wanted to say that the POG group has um, a new chapbook just coming out. And this is just a picture of the front cover of the book and then the title page of the book, which these are being sewn by hand 
uh, one at a time. I think 10 are sewn so far, but they will soon be available uh, through a link on the POG site and also in the Chax Press site for purchase. Uh, there are only 110 copies that will exist. That cover pomegranate is painted on each copy by Cynthia Miller. Okay, tonight you get to hear in this order, uh, Cameron Louie, Tenny Nathanson, Joan Larkin, Brandon Shimoda, Kelsey Venata, Dot Devota, Tere Fowler Chapman, Mary Rose Larkin, Janet Holmes, Lisa Martin, Richard Tavener, John Melillo, Amber Lee Terrasas, Maggie Golston, Gabriel Palacios, Pam Ushuk, David Weiss, Joanna Skibsrud, Reed Dixon, Raquel Gutierrez, Cynthia Miller, Stephen Salmoni, and me. And um, I'm hoping every, all those people are here. I didn't check before I just read that list, but if they're not, hopefully they will be here by the time their name gets called. And until then, we'll have a great time listening to each other. So I'm gonna turn it over right now to Cameron Louie. Yay, it's so good to see you all. Can you hear me okay? Okay, awesome. Um, this poem that I'm gonna read is called True Blue. Uh, I'm actually thrilled that I get to do it with you all on Zoom tonight because it has a soundtrack and some audio visual components. So I'm gonna drop a link in the chat uh, to a YouTube uh, video that's just the song that goes along with it. If you want, you can take 30 seconds now and pull it up. And this is kind of like a polyphonic experience. So you can this have the song play over me uh, while I read. Uh, so this poem is called True Blue. My wife and I are talking about that Herzog movie where they haul a 300 ton boat up a hill in the Peruvian jungle. She is eating some French fries and kneeling in the curly wool of our living room rug. I will not tell you her name. Even in poetry, we deserve to keep some secrets. I will disclose that she is not much like the ripe maroon of ketchup, but sometimes falls completely silent admiring hot sauce, mustard, and mayonnaise which always slick the creases where her bottom lip meets top. She has seen almost every Herzog movie and she can prove they're more interesting to talk about than watch. In the winter, she carries our complex plastic space heater from room to room, creating her own stubborn weather. We agree, you really cannot underestimate a proper spectacle. This morning, I showed her an optical illusion where you stare at a red circle, close your eyes, and find it turns cyan. The disk of perfect blue floats in the void of your not vision, eventually doomed to fade until you wonder if it was all a myth the way Isabella must have doubted the seductive stories of chocolate and cotton that the conquistador Pizarro whispered in her ear at night while the king was in Italy playing with swords. Auteurs are nothing if not unusually cruel, forever trying to prove their wounds are the world's wounds. In the name of nothing but the claim of some dubious blue, they maim and kill their crews, drive actresses mad, and colonize our living rooms. After being bitten by a snake, one of Herzog's men reportedly cut off his own foot with a chainsaw. We're supposed to wonder if there's such a thing as fiction Fact, astronomers have learned that stars shift blue as they loom into view. Often, I imagine the foot tumbling opposite the boat, right down the hill, reaching the river, and gradually turning a waxy periwinkle as it floats out to sea. Thanks for listening. Thank you, thank you. I should have said as well before Cameron read, uh, we are hoping with as many readers as we have that everybody limits to uh, three minutes or, or certainly about three minutes. And, and also because of the number of readers, uh, we're not 
doing introductions for everyone, but if you want to say something about yourself or where you are or anything within that time frame, that is absolutely fine. And so the next reader is Kenny Nathanson. Thanks, Charles. Cameron, that was wonderful. It's fantastic. Thank you. So two things before I start. One, uh, with apologies, um, I may have to leave the reading before it's over. Uh, something came up right before the reading started that I may have to to go and take care of. And then uh, I was going to read a section of the book manuscript, which is almost finished, uh, that's unusually vitriolic, but it was about four and a half minutes. So you get spared that and I'll read something that is less vitriolic. I'm going to read two recent sections, one pretty short and the other very short. So if, if anybody cares, this is a writing through of uh, taking part in the gathering by Shito Chen. anyway. Don't limit yourself to your own small brittle bush, Chilean mesquite, big green stick tree, desert willow, down in the wash, the cottonwoods dozing and dragging a little in winter light. The typical story, if you don't see the way the, dr the crenellated dream time shimmers, sinusoidal pulses with your own eyes, it's not there. Yes, it is, he said, motes coming toward you like snow pulled forward out of the deep blue light magnetic into the mind's fluxed field. And you won't know the road, what road, there isn't one. Even as you're walking it, it falls away beneath your feet into the untold air drifting clouds and walking the way the trees walk, the light ripples in water below the railway trestle bridge, dark green trunks and branches on either side, where the bridge is flowing, the water is still, they say, they say, and say we're never near or far from it, they say, it's the mind that moves, no, the mind doesn't move, they say, like the body reliving a memory of a memory of relative motion, diluted, whew, Hence, we are smack dab in the middle. We're not cut off from it by the railway trestle bridge, a log draped over the water. You could cross the river right there downstream from the bridge a little, walk into the brush and brushing the mesquite trees. There's a place where the eye slides off to the not too distant vanishing point and loses itself back there in what is the sound of one hand. Mountains and rivers rest in it. Time shimmers, stops moving and moves. The invisible light hums softly. Somewhere, nowhere, elsewhere, buzz here, O oh, you who seek the mystery in daylight or in the shadows of night, lie quiet, don't fret, rest easy in the dark, the something something, the pastoral eglantine, no matter what they say, you can't throw away your time. And here's the shorter one. Be softer in summer, get ready to be dead a long, long time. I think that's Faulkner, no matter, be softer, are you ready yet? Thanks. Yay. Thanks. I, for one, am looking forward to that book. And the next reader is Joan Larkin. Thanks, Charles. It's wonderful to be here. I'm going to read two very short poems, loose sonnets that I wrote in Tucson. Um, the first one was sparked by jazz that uh, surprised me by coming out of my car radio on a very dark desert road. Uh, for jazz pianist Fred Hirsch, whisper not. I'm straining to see desert sky dark, left hand on the wheel, right hand turning a knob, and suddenly I'm inside a piano, inside your contrapuntal mind, where glass shakes on a high shelf as the subway comes. Spider swings her spinnerets into the wind, crisscrossing tungsten silk. The future is unforeseen. Nerves stutter, step walk down to the guttural cellar. Left hand argues with right. And just as I think you'll leave me in split space time, the tempo lifts, delivers the key to your house. Still curled in your mind, inside the car, inside the dark, I see your hands your eyes almost sky glow escaping. And uh, this one came while looking at a painting by the American painter, Wayne Thibault, uh, who's known for his paint heavy edible depictions of things like cake and pastry, and in this case, ice cream. Lavished to Wayne Thibault. I'm hungry for it. Your double scoop of thick impasto on a scored cake cup stands downstage center, spotlit against flag blue, blameless. 
Even the shelf it sits on is slathered in edible pinkish milk chocolate paint. I'm hungry and the bottom scoop is melting as the dangerously tilted top scoop defies Newton. The cherry glows like a lit button on a console. The whole treat is about to fall, but your squeezed pigment wants to feed me and my eyes eat. Thanks. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, this already makes me wish we were in one room together having a party afterwards too, but uh, we will go on. Uh, the next reader on the list uh, is Brandon Shimoda, but I do not think he's here. If you're here, Brandon, speak up. But um, I, I think we're going to go on. And if he shows up later, we will figure out how to fit him in at some point. So in that case, Kelsey Venata is next. Thank you. Uh, thanks for sharing your work, everyone. I thought I would bring in some translations tonight. So I'll read a few brief poems that I translated into English um, by the poet Natalia Litvinova. She was born in Belarus um, just before Chernobyl. Her family immigrated to Argentina when she was 10 and she uh, writes poems in, in Spanish. Um, these poems look back at her grandparents' generation and, and her rural Slavic ancestry. So a little of the Spanish and then I'll read mostly in English. Todas las mujeres de mi familia tienen un talismán que las protege. Yo no, pero miento para que me traten con cuidado. All the women in my family have a talisman to protect them. Not me, but I lie, so they'll deal gently with me. Each woman bends and straightens to her own beat, like the keys of an instrument mashed by someone's fingers. Rows of women in skirts and rubber boots dig up root vegetables. This dance keeps us from dying of hunger, they say, and laugh. The roots shriek when you part them from the earth. One day, I couldn't get out of bed. That morning, a strange lime rained over the river. They covered the mirrors and turned the portraits around. In a boat, they brought me to see the healer. It's the evil eye, go home, cut open your pillow and burn what you find there. I found hair, eggshells, and scraps of my face in a photograph. I sprinkled the ashes at the crossroads. The four winds spread my curse over the village. The women in my family keep the hair they cut off in a basket of braids. It's an ancient tradition. No one can remember who started it. Locks, curls, loose hair, coppery, blonde, or ashen. I fear the magpies will steal the hair or a witch will come upon it. If she comes, do not open the door for her. And if you open it, do not let her in. And if you let her in, give her neither salt nor bread. She'll turn everything you've touched into her own element, grandmother warns. I am the last lodging of the curse that passed through the women in my family. The pearl among this broken knacker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next is actually Mary Rose Larkin. And I know she's here. I'm unmuted. Can I'm actually Lisa Martin, but not really. Lisa Martin's right next to me. Can everybody hear me? Yes. yes? Okay. Well, I'm Mary Rose Larkin. 
I am going to read, I didn't write any new works. So I'm going to read old book from the name of this intersection is Frost. I think I first read some of this work when I first read for Pog in 2008. Um, but I'm going to read very, very quickly. I'm going to read six little pieces. Three of them are from Inverse, which was an ABC Darium, and two of them will be from uh, the late winter 30. So from Inverse, sing in and the computer response rupture between characters and currents, sing in, or between theories waking light, eight direction, holy and punctuate, sing in over language, sing out. A photocopy of the year's ghost curve, paradise, interlace, velocity, addition, closed, patter, press alphabet, what it teaches, it teaches at random. And these last two pieces, three pieces are from the late winter 30, which if anybody doesn't know the story of the late winter 30, I'd be happy to tell you, but not now because I want to read for my entire three minutes. <laughs> the pressure of facing the Y section when I wanted horizon, pressure dropped winter angle face and spring 50% pushed through gray, replacing from the top and patchy chaos. No winter or late winter, shiver, cover, some can never, late one in world, no opposite morning, cross struck pink, change insoluble, atmosphere east facing, mothering under, but not under, but not mother, not cinders, not mocking pushed into words. Suffer late other petals synoptic, surface sagittal and 50% no, 30% no, 30 pansies, silver light on the fence line, rain the written. Look again. Shadow chaos, rain, train chaos, expecting never. I'm partially a mouthpiece, partially an other, partially indifferent, winter, winter. Dodger, circuit cumulus, or every, or suffer, or mouth, or late winter passed over, the Doppler impossible. She pushed into a shadow and it pushed back, don't look. Partly, partially, partly window, partly fractured in land and in body and system, partly mixing up and pinked out. And out again, and horizon, and violet, violet unsettling, and rusted more, and in again, and change clearly, and no east winter, and no East River and no Cerulean 30 and gone again and pedal that and out again and pedal this and atmosphere awake and surface startle and in again and gone again and yellow gray and moving white and denominator and ruination and, and in again and shadow throat and lifeline and mission two and chain link fence and cinder faced and gone again. I'll be the 50% chance. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Rose. Uh, the next reader is in the same screen, Lisa Periale Martin. Okay, sorry. Okay, this first one is one of the two poems in our new pod chat book. From the Lookout Tower, and it's dedicated to my friend Russell Baker. I'm sleeping with E.E. E. Cummings, the complete poems, Black cover from 72 jammed against my thigh. Not refined, more buck than bite. I read him 13 times a night. Anais gets it. I can feel it. She moves shimmering with heat in June. Now you're over me, wrapped in night. Drove the rim road by moonlight. 
brazened, blazing through atmosphere, pocked tectites, peridot, olivine, scattered at the canyon edge. And another short one with a nod to Monty Python called Dreamwork. These are the inner thighs of my thoughts, secret prayers, private longings tonight. They look like buildings, some great public buildings, but they are the soft underbelly settling in for the night, ready to perform as the wish fulfillment of a suppressed desire. And who among us has not at some point set fire to a great public building? I know I have. <laughs> Thank you. Next is Richard Tavener. Unmute. Oh, we're not getting there. We go. All right. All right. Richard Tavener here, poet electrician. Let the whistle. First rain, during the first rain, and after many months of none, the stones by the path where we walk each day, my love, undress in all their colors. When lovers spoon, in any season, when in their sleep lovers spoon, a small bed contains <laughs> this one's still in the house rocking chair baby on his chest asleep at last after much humming and rocking and the baritone of the waves the rise and fall of the sea all right now it's off to work we always got to take a work break when we work and so Morning reflections, sunlight in a stream of pee behind the garage. The customer will not know. Steam rising through winter weeds. Still working. This one's in the summer. Salt, salt of my body, dried white upon a black shirt. The rains have not come. I'll close with this one. Land below and beyond. Crossing a plateau in a vision of the ground below. Brush and boulder flying behind and the earth ahead racing up from cliffs in a land beyond blocked from sight for now. But soon the eye in flight is drawn to the edge and beyond and out over a new land far below. It falls away in its fine grains from the rock face far down to the soft hills beneath and then in a air. Soon the hills have run the plain, all green with growth, thick and tall, sweeping out and away. Yet here below, two white Cranes are gliding and sinking in smaller circles down to land in a nest in parted grass. But finally, as vision lifts, as it must, to the distance where grass ends and trees begin, somehow it is known that the dark line of trees hides a river, a border, a land beyond where vision and flight must fail. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. And next is John Melillo. Thank you. Thank you everyone for uh, everything that you've read. Um, thank you for having us here. This is really, really wonderful. Um, I'm gonna read uh, two things. Uh, One's a, a, a quote from Edouard Glissant uh, for opacity. And it's just something I've been reading and thinking right now about 
Um, opacities can coexist and converge, weaving fabrics. To understand these truly, one must focus on the texture of the weave and not on the nature of its components. For the time being, perhaps, give up this old obsession with discovering what lies at the bottom of nature's. There would be something great and noble about initiating such a movement, referring not to humanity, but to the exultant divergence of humanities. Um, and the second thing I want to read is uh, a bit from uh, an upcoming chapbook of mine called The Mouth is a Resonant Field, um, that it will uh, be um, uh, uh, alongside, will be released alongside an upcoming album that's been COVID delayed, which also has the same name, uh, The Mouth is a Resonant Field, released by 2182 Recording Company um, in uh, Tucson, Arizona. So uh, this also is in the POG chapbook. Nice to hear the echo of my words. This, this uh, refers, this poem is sort of, um, it from that moment at the beginning um, of the pandemic when everyone was listening differently and things were quieter for a little bit. We walk in the spectral block, a wind blows. We move over there, the palm trees in the neighbor's yard, sound source, sound cause, sound effect. You push the air through you, does this make you self-caused? All the little ants on the sidewalk, WPA stamp in the concrete, the unfolded leaves crackling in air. Thanks everyone. Thank you, John. We're gonna have to have some, have some lunch party for that album. That, that would be great. <laughs> And the next uh, presenter is Amberly Tarazas. Great. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Okay, excellent. This is a poem I call God of No Name. When I was a child, I didn't have a God with a name, or rather, we weren't churchgoers, which gave me some grief in public school told by one first grade boy that hell was waiting for me and my family since we weren't Christian. This stirred something in me, a bit of rebellion that day, was angry at elementary school life. I threw my fists in the air and dared say the words, F you God. However, my sentience had already developed enough to know that even if there was no old man in the sky, there was something certainly grand that I could feel each day permeate my soul. I didn't think of God much during rebellious teen years, not until later when face was certain hell gripped in hollow darkness, slavery of addiction and my own unique mental illness. I knew I had to figure some things out and I knew I needed some answers from a kind, loving source. I needed to start fresh, build a new relationship with God. Of course, I found comfort in the greats, Christ and Buddha and Krishna, but I found so many other regular humans who hold the divine consciousness. I even read a book called God by Hundred Beings. But the best help I received was simply journaling each day, asking God, great spirit, intimate question by inner world. And I found such loving, peaceful energies in nature. I began calling out, God bless this earth. God bless you spirits of the trees. Thank you for helping us breathe. I found my way out of darkness not by turning myself over to an exterior being or method, but by returning to my own divine nature, the me that was me before this world impressed upon me. For me, God has no name. 
God is a feeling, divine love, appreciation, and joy found right there in the presence of our own human hearts. My greatest joy would be that another and maybe even many more will find their own special way back to heart and the peace of the beloved. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Okay, next is Maggie Goldston. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm hoping we have a little break, but my dogs are currently going into barking fits because of a tarantula in the back. It's tarantula season. So things are kind of intense over here right now. Um, <laughs> but I, I do have a poem to share, it's something I'm working on. Um, it's really, really fresh and not so, I'm not so keen on it. Um, I think it hasn't maybe found its final draft even, but it's called Loose Lips and it's sort of inspired by all this 20th anniversary of 9-11 stuff. It is a good thing to be blessed. We are not so lucky, laid out on the table before the blue light of disaster porn, flattened neighborhood pan from copter, squawk and rasp and squawk again. The FCC issues a warning to Clear Channel about playing dust in the wind. You drop the bomb on me, baby. I have a neighborhood I want, a better stretch of pocked asphalt. The scratching of my own legs that draws blood could be my soul trying to get out, but no one says, bless you. Take me down and all apart. Locus of 1997, the ability to be actually in it before it dissolves. The doctrinal code is preparedness, which belies the, awe, belies the awe of the shock. Clear Channel issues an edict, its frequencies forbidding surprise. No one is asking, so we leave it alone. The dogs know something. The staging of the news camera whose angle does not move as the terrier makes the smallest whimper and reveals herself. We miss the premillennial dog his antediluvian confirmation. We hear less and less of the future and watch the present revealed in smaller smithereens. The future only discussed in terms of preparing, following orders, the apparatus. It is a good thing to prepare. I am not so lucky. A child who waits too long to set the balloon free until it lacks the elemental gas to disappear. I am an ever heavier thing. Can't we show a little discipline? The smallest dog snuffles in the corner, cataracted eyes nearly closed. I wake him as I lift him to the bed. I have an idea then that nothing ever comes to any good, but don't worry. When I wake up, I will be something different. Thanks, Pog. Thank you, Maggie. And next is Gabriel Palacios. Is Gabriel here? Oh, right over here. Oh, there you are, okay. Hello. Okay, yeah, sorry, I had to go offline for a minute. Uh, did we have a, a little switch in the in the lineup? We did, we had a, uh, uh, two or three people that couldn't make it. Okay, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. I'm happy to be here and, and reading. I'm gonna read a poem from a new sequence of poems uh, called in store loop and they're they're kind of poems of exploitation and this is this is one of them uh, called the antarcticans the antarcticans you know not the hour so it's easy being the man in the bolero hat mustache and ankle shells for rent at hedonism too in the winter the Latinx librarian conference circuit spring, remembering the degradation gauntlets ached to maybe tickle Johnny Carson on a Monday, NPR at drive time, how little stardom means to dogs allowed inside the restaurant or you, 
who won't be moved to compliment my neck brace, my brand new face, except Antarctica. Antarcticans are sick of being told. The Visit Arizona rest stop sky can rock its Guadalupe shawl. I don't buy murder magazines like that or fill up bathtubs just in case when I hear thunder. The world was cut up like a cake of ice already when for pasta change, I thugged out like some young from your perspective father laid off work one morning, dealing business cards, complimentary massage, one bedroom to the next of a party he was not invited to later that night. Never did I think to guard the borders of your tundra, more oil rig or moon base anyway than homeland to your mother, switch allegiances, transracialize my hair. I'm here so someone can't be. Imprint of a slither on the undeveloped acre, Lincoln bus stop, double tree, the airport, nothing sticks, no elder cleans, my cleaned out mausoleum drawer, human graveyard, chapel, bell grease. You can't rehabilitate what I am any more than you can surgically remake a fed informant's child. What even can you tell someone like me who doesn't learn from violence doesn't see his own disfigured eye until the doctor grins, watch out, your face is gonna stay like that. I spooked myself out of the cave, gang stalking posthumous Hollywood infamy. I'm parked in that targeted space waiting. Of all the atavistic faces stationed in the London town fair shops parking lot, good luck for getting mine because I sliced you so bad. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, next is Pam Ushuk. Hi, thank you, Charles, for inviting me to read tonight with everyone. Pog is such an important part of this, of our Tucson community. And I've always admired your reading series. I hope you'll all donate to Pog tonight. Um, and I also invite you to uh, submit poems to our magazine, Cutthroat, a Journal of the Arts. We're reading right now for a special climate change issue that will be a print issue. And you go to www.cutthroatmag.com. Don't just go to Cutthroat or you're going to go to a casino. So, and that one, <laughs> can't do anything there. <laughs> the poem I'd like to read tonight is for Melissa Pr uh, Pritchard and Cynthia Hogue and uh, Terry Acevedo is called Walking the Labyrinth. Persephone, I am not the first half light shifting between the underworld and what passes for bird song hidden by the drenched branches of evergreens. Every two weeks, thin wires of platinum, sap extracted from the yew tree, storms my blood and I'm thrown into Pluto's suffocating arms, dizzied, seeking a cure, to heal time spinning at the heart of disease. Implosion, a building becomes a vacuum, becomes a woman who loses breath to rebuild herself, a few beams missing each time, keeps the leaded do glass doors of her heart open washes her windows, lemon juice clean, flings them wide to a gypsy mountain breeze. Feed the birds. The Dalai Lama's astrologer as admonished, when you feel very bad, when you are suffering, feed the birds. Each day I refill the feeder for house finches, gambles quail, the cloud fearing morning doves, says Phoebe, white-throated sparrows, the last lingering winter hummingbirds sipping nectar, red as Kool-Aid, or the inner lips of bougainvillea, stunning the Thanksgiving porch. The wall. In a photo, a man's hand slips between huge welded, welded metal plates of the ignorant wall we built separating Mexico from our hearts, just 90 miles away 
His hand cups his wife's waist. Solace doesn't recognize walls that stop and embrace. Split families as if they're disposable cords of balsa wood to stoke xenophobia's hearth fire, fire of fear. Frankenstorm. In every convergence, separation shifts what would ground us, what might open our hearts. A storm converging hurricane, snowstorm, rain, a tidal surge over a thousand miles wide eats the eastern shore. Weeks after, searchers uncover legions of the drowned. In every convergence, wings greet dawn and dusk, love swirling through a crenulated brain that invents songs, another kind of compassion we fail to emulate. The dance tapped out from branch to wet branch, we could learn to lift us from the vast country of loneliness fashioned from desire's threads. Food versus fracking. Who sets Pluto's table inside Earth? Mother we've ravished and stolen from. Even trees uproot themselves, trying to get our attention. How much oil can we extract from her breasts? How much methane drawn up as toxic fire from the underworld? Through a piped web of destruction, beneath schoolyards where children run with laughter they invent as they invent the world each day. The gift of the labyrinth. The way in is the way out. Persephone notes, fingering the cool black rock walls. She breathes gently on his brow made of flames. There are ways to charm even monsters. Thank you. This poem is from my new book, uh, Refugee, coming out from Red Hen Press. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. And the next reader, who's also part of our POG members group, and a, a very important part, David Weiss. Uh, hello, thank you. Can am I good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is a a poem I'm reading. It's called uh, "I One Steady." I. I am not I. Am not I. Be I. Be not I. One. One exists. Do exist. One do not exist. Exist does exist. One does not. One exist. One exists as exists. One is not one exists as existing one is not one existing one i i loses i or has lost i or is losing i the function i is not i an illusion i lying in service i to wholeness i can never i not itself never is i until i dies i then i's wholeness i doesn't matter so much i one one am one, am not one, be one, be not one. I. I suffers I because I is suffering I, that is I, to be an I is, oh, <laughs> to be an I is to know I ceasing I. One. One never ends, one never ceases being one, being not as being one, being as being one, indivisible one, even as one is divided one. I, I belongs I or belongs to I or belongs with I belongs I. One, one age one saw the one cease one. It wasn't beautiful one saw the one cease not one. Isn't wasn't beautiful one both ones were ugly one. I saw an Inca dove or <laughs> no, I messed that one up. I saw an I an Inca dove I. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And next is Johanna Skipsrud. Hi. Hi. Thank you all. Um, this has been wonderful. Um, we're actually in Nova Scotia now, so it's a well, it's a, almost midnight. So you would wonder why he's not in bed, but he's not in bed. 
um, but he's settling down. So I'm going to, um, uh, I'm reading, I'm reading two uh, poems, um, two short poems. And uh, it's uh, some poems I wrote this summer as part of this project here where uh, local poets were asked to respond to the artwork of um, yeah, vis local visual artists. So this is, John has it here. This is Surf One and there's Surf Two here, Surf Two. And uh, uh, so these were the, these were the uh, paintings that I chose. And so I, you can see the, the paintings and now I'll read yes. my poems and um, these are dedicated to John Malillo. Surf One. There must have been a beginning, an idea first, a bright smudge, layer after layer, each one pressed without distance against the next until just this single crested wave drawn flat against a smear of colored sky. It is the perfect realism. There is nothing that comes next. The idea, the first smudge, forget that. There is no movement, no transparency, no sequence, no progression. Even the spray of light and air is opaque, is pressed in layers, even the streak of purple sky, all is here, all is perfectly still, nothing breaks. Surf two. If distance is illusion, if depth, if all is here now and just this beautiful, beautiful illusion, how will we grow old? Thank you. Thank you. Back to my list here, which I lost, oh, okay. Um, the next reader will be Cynthia Miller. Hi, that helps, doesn't it? Um, I'm mostly a painter, but I do write all the time. And these are from notebooks. Um, I took a trip to uh, um, Spain and, and Italy and France with my daughter a number of years ago. And I had this wild dream when I was in Marseille. And this is the dream. I am visiting in Texas, talking with Maggie Kirkendall. Tell her she is like women in Barcelona. How, she says, beautiful and tough a little crazy, maybe a little mean. I'm confused. I called Charles and my phone is acting up as usual. He comes to me on his phone, a video of himself dressed up in rainbow colors, silly, driving with a lot of others dressed similar. They are drunk. You were not supposed to see that, he says. We have a giant argument and I let him know that he has to move out before I get back. Then I am telling people that I am here, but I am also in Marseille and I have to get back. I have a conversation with a woman about aging and its difficulties in relationships and then talk with a man about his lady friend who used to go out to dye her uh, gray roots. And then her husband became so ill that he couldn't speak and she didn't want to leave him alone. So she stopped dyeing her hair, embarrassed, and now he can't speak, and she stays out of sight in the same house. That's dreams. Okay, I have another little little uh, poem. This is for uh, Hurricane Harvey, which we were we went through in in South Texas, August twenty fifth, twenty seventeen. Hurricane Harvey. Tape the windows. Cover with cardboard. Fill the bathtub, candles, matches, flashlight, batteries, rain boots, radio, ice chest, ice, water, sandbags. Meet the big wind of all directions in the darkness. Trees trying to move over leaves, ripped from themselves, birds huddled on the ground. Still the toads and the frogs sing, chirp, 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 songs of opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia. I need a reminder about that because I slept through Hurricane Harvey. Uh, that's that's when they, my family found out I can sleep through anything. <laughs> uh, 
Um, the next reader is Stephen Salmoni. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, everybody. My goodness. I wish we were all here together in a big room. But one thing I love about this, this is the, the conversation that happens with everybody's work. It seems like it's one big poem. So I'm going to read a very quick piece. Uh, it's called Seven Still Lives. Uh, I guess if Cynthia is a painter who writes, I'm a writer who wishes he was a painter. And, okay, Seven Still Lives, one. To imagine I'd speak without the index. To be here, to extract letters in the eventuality of repetition. One, to note the style fixed by its traces, another to curve, and another set parallel along the plane. The letters ply the visible, but some must face the line to afford their intervals. Two, roses, you see, not knowing the words, although a remote pair, a rose sat in the road. Enlarged the truth, is the sum of green and yellow. Nothing in the voice is only pending. Three, the wound outlasts the pose. The wind outlasts the wound or the wind outlasts the wound, whichever you like. I'm speaking where the comma should be and to exfoliate the measure, no more numerous than vacant leaves in the anonymous quatrain. Four. Now, a shadow will make no further acquaintance. The shadow of bodies is the science of which the angle is just a mark. Red is an attributive which cannot stand. Five. Primrose was still more a formality than all the other impressions of the species, which made clear the question of whether a rose remained in the prismatic imperfections of the forgotten. The paper still may be, the scene will be as yet to be, and then to be augured, hewed under the same incendiary finger no stranger to the moment that creates the things it does not accordingly create. Six, although the word means opposition, the word opposed did not seem to land with as much impact. One would at least want to believe in reliving the event, a contrary fate of reading and thereby missing fate. A rabbit is asymmetrical. Chance translates to silk, prone to sun's saturated metaphysics. In the end, our yellows returned us to those who, in the manner of a rose, we had long been missing. The rose yellow jar would have to assume resemblance. The roses all turn yellow alarmed that the yellow rose was missing. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. And, and, and I hope you get to be that painter sometime. I'd like to see those two. Okay. In the so, next so I have the pleasure of being the final reader here. And I'm also reading something like uh, Mary Rose that's from some time ago, uh, but I was reminded of it. Uh, just the last few days because uh, Cynthia, who is my wife and love, uh, was teaching a course at the Tucson, at the drawing studio in Tucson on the wonderful Tucson painter, Nancy Tokar Miller, and who chose part of this poem um, to be an epigraph in her uh, catalog from her retrospective exhibition so so this is in and nancy's no longer with us so so this is thank you to cynthia and thank you to her to nancy and this is from uh pushing water number 50 and it's not the whole poem because that's like eight pages and so but 
We have taken too long to arrive at the wrong place. Let us begin again, as though space is a circle and time the force that spins it all until we lift up and fall down dizzy and bruised and unbruised. I am pear and apple, frog and toad, needle and pin, head over heels in and out of my shoes until a mockingbird calls and it is time to stand up again on the rock at the edge of the morning. Aneth, the marvelous hidden stuff of rock and lime, cup beyond time. What cannot be used is of much use. Aneth and Owl, leaves rustle in Burnham Wood or in the Psalm or north of the Great Canyon, even midsummer. The air cool, the path dark with emerging traces of illumination. To navigate and circumnavigate, hither again to haven, heaven, hover, suspend, a wing and a word, over a place, water meets land, place of landing, western shore, Anglesey, birch by the sea. Aneth bid bet e Arthur, anoint with bells and art soars anew. By earth and water, dig under the words or inside them, word earth, wonder, Aneth. Behind our house, a mound of dirt rich for the garden, Leave it undisturbed until music fills the weeds, the grass, the red buds and petals and purple yellow, the difficult things of wonder, the uncovered dreams, anathal, materials in which I speak of the best of dreams dreamed at midnight when men, women, and their voices rest. Thank you. That's what we do in the Zen meditation group, wave our fingers <laughs> in one that, that's, that, that I'm in. All right. Um, I just want to thank everybody for being here. I, I'm sorry we missed a couple. Let me say also that uh, while either all or most of the people who are actually the group that create these POG events read in this annual POG and Friends. We, we also try to include, you know, and most of the readers were, were others, and we try to include different people every year, and we come back to some people after another year. So if, you know, if you're in Tucson and like what we do at POG and might like to read in a future year in this event, which happens generally as our kickoff event every September, um, you know, please let you know, you know me or or um, or one of the people in Pog, and I think pretty much everybody who's present here knows how to reach at least one of us. Know that you might like to take part because I, I think you know I, I spoke of Pog early as a an organization, but what we really are is a bunch of friends, and we're all poets uh, or artists. Um, and we just try to make things happen that that we want to hear and that we hope others want to hear too and that we hope contribute to this community. So thank you for helping what you're doing just by being here, even if you didn't read. And I hope we see you again soon. And thank you. I knew. <laughs> Just and it's not yet now. it's not yet on the Pog or Chacks website, but it will be. Okay, yeah, I was just looking for it, and I'm like, where? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, um, when will it be up? Do you know? Oh, probably within a two, a couple of days. Okay, excellent. I'll look out for it. All right, thank you. Thank you. Nice, nice to see you, Janelle. <laughs> nice to see thank you. you.